Hello, folks. Today we are doing the greatest search. Uh, this is on Hacker Rank. Uh, it is a medium difficulty problem, and um, this time I'm actually going to do this in Python. Ooh, I know. Uh, if you're curious about the JavaScript solution, the logic is basically the same. It's just a little different syntax. I'll be going through my logic, so you could still replicate it um, on your own if you need to. Uh, like what I normally do, I'll do this uh, setup where I, I kind of read the problem, get a good understanding for it, give you some time to do it on your own, and then I'll go over my solution. So here it is. Uh, given a 2D array of digits or grid, try to find the occurrence of a given 2D pattern of digits. For example, so here you have a grid of a bunch of numbers. This is going to be an n, an n times m. So they're not. It's not necessarily a square. Uh, and you're looking for this pattern, which is another uh, argument that you're going to be given. Uh, and so you're trying to find this pattern within this grid. And you can see that it kind of exists right here in the smack middle, right there, right there. Uh, and uh, you're supposed to complete the grid search function. Uh, it should return yes, the string yes, all capital Y E S, in the pattern if the pattern exists or no otherwise. And that's basically it. It's, an, it's a pretty uh, straightforward question here. So, um, so I'll, I'll give you all a second to do it on your own, and we'll come back for my solution. So first, I'll note that it's nothing really too fancy, honestly. It's just doing what's called a grid search. You're just going one character at a time, finding the thing that you need, and finding your pattern match. So the way I'm going to be looking at it is kind of like how um, when I do like a word search, I'm just like looking one at one letter at a time. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing here. Uh, so what I'll be doing is looking one character at a time until I bump into the first character, in this case, the eight. Uh, I'd be bumping into that. Um, and I'm actually going to do this a bit more intelligently than just blindly looking because uh, you might run into some timing issues. You can actually save a lot of time if you recognize that the width of the pattern, the, the number of columns, is uh, going to limit what you need to search for. So here I have six characters, which means that the last five characters in the, the grid I can basically ignore because the pattern of six cannot fit into, you know, the, the pattern where you have six columns can't fit into the last five. So the only numbers I need to check are one, two, three, and four, and five, because the last one, the last five I can ignore. So I would search only that part. Uh, the same thing goes with the number of rows. There are three rows here. So the last two rows in my grid I can ignore, because again, the pattern can't fit in that space. Okay, anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm basically searching for the eight. So my logic is I'm going to search up to here. I don't find an 8. I'm going to go down one and search for the 8. I bump into the, an 8. Uh, and uh, what I'll basically be doing is I'll be searching that um, 8. And I'm looking for all the 8s in that row. And I'm just going to grab the index in indices of all the 8s in that row. And once I have the indices of those 8s, I basically have a queue to look through um, for my pattern. So if I bump into an 8, I say, OK, this index uh, is 0, 1, 2. That's this 2 index. So this 2 index, that whole column, is what I'll be kind of searching through. Uh, and I'll be grabbing this and trying to match it up with my pattern. So I'll take a slice and say, hey, is this slice equal to this slice? If yes, great, go to the next one. Does this slice line up with this slice? Yes, great, go to the next one. And then once you're done, you will say, I'll return yes once I know that I've matched my pattern. So that's the logic. Uh, I'm going to go right into their code right now. OK, so here is the start of my code. I have here two functions. Uh, one is called, I'm just kind of kneading it up here. So one is called get indices by character. Uh, this is uh, a helper function I'm making for myself. And then here's the grid search function, which is the main function here. Uh, I'll first explain the, the first one here called get indices by row. Uh, I'll be using this later, but effectively, I'm going to be providing it two uh, arguments. First, uh, the row, which is going to be the grid row, and that'll be just a string of characters, basically, uh, as well as a character. And in this case, it would be like uh, the eight from before. It's the first character that I'm trying to search for. And what I'm going to do is I'm doing a little list comprehension here. I'm uh, enumerating. So for those who are not familiar with enumerate, it's going to take a, a list or any kind of iterable. In this case, it's a string. So strings are iterable. Uh, and it's going to break it down into its index and the individual element that you're at. Uh, so I'm going to uh, break it up here. And then I'm going to check if the letter is equal to the character I'm looking for, then we're going to be using that index. 
Uh, so in the end, this will return a list of indices that match where the character is. All right, the next part is the actual grid search. So here is a little bit of setup. Uh, first, I'll instantiate my constants as yes and no. That's, again, I like to do that kind of thing. I abstract my strings. Then I set up um, some very well, some good no, good things to know. Uh, first is the length of the grid, which uh, the grid, by the way, is a nested list. So it's uh, uh, the length is referring to the number of rows. So here is the grid rows. That's the number of rows. Uh, same thing with grid columns. If you take the first element and you find the length of that, that's the, the number of columns. Uh, I do this basically the same thing with the pattern, which is its own kind of grid. It's a small, smaller pattern usually. Um, and the thing I will I mentioned before is I need I can kind of limit my search pattern because I don't need to check the the end the tail end of the grid uh, depending on the size of the pattern. And so I'll just take the grid columns minus the pattern columns, and this gives me the maximum the maximum index for the 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 max column index basically in the grid. And I have the same thing for the row. Uh, here I'm establishing the first character in the pattern to look for. Uh, I just like to set, segment it out as like this is the first pattern. So in the example before, that was the eight basically. So I'm looking for the first. I'm looking for eight as I scan. That's the first thing I need to be looking for. Okay, so here is the start of the logic here. So first, I'm going to loop through all of the rows in the grid, uh, and uh, I'm setting a max range here of the max row plus one, so I can go from zero all the way up to the max row. But because of how range works, it goes, it's exclusive. So I want to add one just to that. So so this is important to have this like little extra plus one, otherwise you're going to be one off. So I have my row index. And again, that's the row of the grid. I'm going to grab my grid row from my grid. This is going to be a string of numbers. And then what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm using my little helper function here. And I'm going to grab my, it's, a, it's broken down to two parts here. So this is like the first argument here is the row. But remember, I don't need to look at the tail end because of uh, the pattern that might uh, uh, might be too long. That I won't need the very tail end always. So I'm, I'm segmenting off the part that we don't need. And again, this is the max column I. And again, plus one because it's, inclusive, it's exclusive. So that's the string that I'm searching through. And the thing I'm searching for is the first character. So by the end, these uh, this variable here called potential starting indices is a list of indices that I can start looking for my um, my first character. And this, uh, you know, for the example again, it was eight. So this is the list. So now we can say, okay, we'll loop through that and basically do our search. So for starting potential starting index in potential starting indices, this will be just a single number. And um, I'm setting a flag here called early break. Uh, we'll see what this is doing later. And I'm going to loop through my pattern now. So I have my grid, and I need to line it up with my pattern, basically. Uh, and the two need to match. And the second they don't match, I can say, hey, this is not a match. Or if it does match, then we found our match, basically. So here, we're going to loop through um, between zero, you know, 0 and the pattern rows. So pattern rows are the number of rows in the pattern. So this is 0 to you know, whatever n uh, rows there are in the pattern. So this is my pattern row i for index. So I, again, I need to match up my pattern index with my grid uh, row. So I'm grabbing here the row i, which is uh, where the grid row is. And I'm going to add wherever my pattern i is. So at the start, those two will be the same. This pattern row i will be zero, so this grid row i will be just the first row, and this is I'll call the inner grid row, and then I need to also match it up with the pattern row at the same time. So I'm just grabbing the first um, from the pattern, uh, and I need to match up these rows to see if they work basically. Um, so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to take my string and basically slice between where it starts and where it's supposed to end. And my inner grid row is that string. So I need to take this string and slice it between the starting index, which is what this is, and whatever, um, uh, and the number of columns that the pattern has in it. So that's why I'm just doing that in a, it's a short step here. I'm just gonna add the starting index plus 
the length of the, the number of columns in the pattern, which I'm, I'm going to call this the ending index. And so I'm going to grab the string. I'm going to slice between the starting position and the ending index. And oops, sorry. And this will give me my grid row slice. So this is the slice that is supposed to match up with the pattern row. And if it doesn't, then, well, we can stop searching effectively. So here is that logic. So if the grid row slice does not match the pattern row, I'm going to set my flag to true. And I'll just break this loop right now because I don't need to keep searching. Once I'm out of this loop, I can then check, OK, if I broke early, well, then I know I didn't find my pattern. But if I didn't break early, if not early break, well, that means I went through this search and I didn't find uh, a mismatch. I found all matches. Then I can return yes right here and now. Once you get through all of the rows in your grid without executing this, return at yes, well, then you know that you didn't find anything. And you can return no. So that is the logic there. Let me run down my uh, run code here. Let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. My internet is taking its sweet time because right now everyone and their grandma is on the internet. All right, it looks like it passes the test cases. Let's see what it does on the submission. Hey, we did it. Okay, it did the thing. All right, so I wanna go over the time complexity now. This is a little janky because of all the stuff that's going on, but it kind of makes sense. And I'll talk about a bit of the efficiency, the realistic efficiency under the hood afterwards. Um, so first off, we are going th through each row in our grid. So you can think that this is maybe big O of N here. Uh, so N being the number of row grids or grid rows. Um, We're doing a little bit of string splicing here. So this is what this part is. Uh, if you look up some tables in uh, Python splice, string splicing, this is uh, whatever the length of the string is. Um, effectively, that's that's what the, the, the time complexity is. Um, so here, the length is actually the M, which is the number of grid columns. And then K, which is, I'm going to call that the uh, the length of the pattern. So you subtract that, and you get the, the total uh, length of the string that you're, grid, you're grabbing. Um, so that's one thing to consider. It's small, but you know it's there technically. Um, we're told that uh, so we're actually going to also loop through all the indices. Potentially, we have every index 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 in our grid row in there. So we're going to call this big of M, where M is the number of grid columns. Uh, and then within that, we're looping through all of the pattern rows, and P is the number of pattern rows. So this is big O of P. And again, within that, we are doing another slice, a splice, which is right, right here. So we're splicing from our inner grid row, the pattern that we're supposed to match on. And we're going to call that big O of K. And K is the number of columns in the pattern. So if you put it all together, you get this really janky time complexity, which is what we have here. Um, and I want to note here that even though it seems like a lot, you know, this is like N times M times P times K, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. And if you look all the way to the top, the constraints say that these things are at most a thousand. So you potentially have like a thousand to the fourth power, which seems like, it's like some crazy number. Um, but in the end, the um, the realistic nature of this, uh, the way that we have our workflow set up, the there's we've re we've removed a lot of redundancy. If you don't find a pattern, you stop short. You know, it's very it's it, it seems like it's not very quick, but in fact, there's a lot of early stopping here. And we're reducing as much time as we can within the logic of our uh, our algorithm here. So uh, even though it's you know it seems like a lot here, in actuality there's a lot of um, efficiency in place. Okay, so I uh, hope that was helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you do enjoy my content, make sure to like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will see you next time. Take care.